So what does that mean? That means what? X is equal to 3. X is equal to 3. Or the variable that we're looking for is equal to 3. Correct? The solution to this statement is what? Just 3. Just 3. Excellent. Here's the second one. Here's the second one. What does... So the second one, some of you guys are saying that 3 is less than some number, right? Yep. We call it x, and we give it a variable, but we don't know exactly what that number is, right? Some of you guys are saying that some number has to be more than 3. You guys are just reading it opposite ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. The solution to the statement number 2 is any of the numbers that are greater than 3, Okay, or any numbers, okay, where th 3 is less than that number. So any values where 3 is less than those values. There's two ways to say the same thing. Okay, a third one. What does this mean? Okay, what does that mean? 3 times the number plus 5 times the number equals 6. 3 times the number plus 2 times another number equals 6. That's like almost reading it. But actually this says the combination of x's and y's that make the statement true or the combination of x's and y's when you substitute them in there equals 6. Right? Okay. If you remember, let's go through some, some um, refresher. If I were to, each one of these has a graph represented we can represent it by, okay? The first one, um, the graph is pretty simple. It's just an x, y, right? A dot there in one, one dimension. In two dimensions, um, in two dimensions, it's a vertical line, right? In two dimensions, it looks like that, right? Do you guys get that? How about this one? One dimension. Yes, sir. Um, how would we know what, whether to write it in one or two dimensions for the first one? Um, we're going to get there. Okay. The first dimension, it looks like that. There's actually a second. There's a second way to graph that. In two dimensions, it looks like that. Does that make sense? On the third one, there's two variables, so we can actually only graph it in um, two dimensions. Oops. We can actually only graph it in two dimensions because it's the set of all ordered pairs that make that a true statement. So when we go ahead and graph it, we wind up getting that set. Okay? Any questions on that? We're going to extend this one more spot today. We're going to extend it to here. We're going to have to make it an inequality. And that's what we're going to talk about this week. We're going to talk about linear inequalities, graphing linear inequalities, and graphing systems of linear inequalities. That's kind of what we're talking about this chapter. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this, but we're going to have to decide the additional ordered pairs that make this a true statement. All the other x, y pairs that say that it's less than, that are less than 6 when you substitute them back in. That's going to be a whole slew of of points that are not just represented by the line. First, it's going to have to be a dashed line to give you a heads up. Um, it's going to have to be a dashed line because it doesn't have the equal sign so that it turns around and looks just like, you know, these two as compared. Okay. And then secondly, we're going to have to decide which way to shade. Um, this one, in fact, we're going to wind up shading below instead of to left and right like that. Okay. But in order to do that, we first have to review a whole bunch of stuff. So on that worksheet I just gave you, go ahead and do the front.
you, you have to be able to do that in order to do this little unit that we're doing right now. It's the linear inequalities. Okay. First, um, graph. Graph the line. Graph the line. Second, determine if it's a dashed line or solid line. Okay? If it's these two, it's dashed. If it's those two signs, it's solid. Right? And now that should kind of correlate to you guys because if we're um, if we have these two in one dimension, those those two in one dimension, it's an open circle, right? In two dimensions, it's a dashed line. Those visually should kind of match for you guys. Open circle, open line ish. Closed. The equal part, closed circle, closed line, both mean the same thing. The dashed line means it's all the ordered pairs that get really, really close to that line, but not the things on that line, okay, are solutions to the inequality. The solid line represents the fact that, yes, all the points on that line are solutions to the inequality because of the equal part. Without the equal part, you can't get officially get to the, the line part of it. You just get really, really ridiculously close. It's like an open circle. You just get really close to that point. You don't actually get there. Okay, closed circle, you actually get to the point. Number three, uh, test a point not on the line. And step four, determine which side to shade. You do that if the test point makes a true statement, shade the side. Shade the side with the test point. If it makes a false statement, test other side. As we talked earlier, the shaded spot represent all the possible solutions for that inequality. Okay, all the possible ordered pairs that make that statement true. Okay, so when you test a point, if it makes a true statement, that part needs to be shaded or included in the shaded region. If it makes a false statement, that point needs to not be included in the in the shaded spot in the shaded region. Okay, and that's kind of what we're going to do. So when we take a look at number one, we're going to start at six, right? Then we're going to graph it. We're going to go up three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, right four. Can't draw a straight line right now. Okay, that's step one, graph the line. Step two, is it going to be solid or dashed? It's going to be solid. It's going to be solid. It's going to be solid because it's the equal part of the inequality. Okay? What point do you guys want to test? What point do you guys want to test? This is choose your own adventure. Some adventures are easier than others. One adventure in particular is the easiest. What point? Just zero. We need an XY pair. Zero, zero, somebody says. Does that seem like that's the easiest one most of the time? 
It's easy. Yeah, it is. Because zero times anything is zero, so it's easy, right? So we test, so we'll test zero zero into the original equation. We get zero is greater than or equal to six. True or false? Tested zero zero. True or false? Zero greater than six? That's false. So what do we do? Shade the, shade the side without zero, zero. So it's above. Apparently, guys, I wrote test instead of shade up here. Shade the other side. I'm not sure whether I said test or, sh or shade. I'm sorry about that. Just slipped it. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, if it's a false statement, shade the other side. It probably clarifies things a little bit for you guys. Sorry about that. Talk about graphing this one. So first, um, last chapter, we diverted just by solving everything for y. Now, you don't have to do that. There's like a bunch of ways to graph it. But if you solve it for y, you get y is less than or equal to negative 3 halves x minus 6. Negative 6 over 4 reduces to negative 3 halves. So, wait, you didn't write your equal sign. No, I got an inequality. So you start at negative 6, which is the y-intercept. Then we go down 3, right 2. And it's solid or dashed, folks. Solid. By the way, if you... Want me to make sure to know that you want it, you had a solid line there? Just write the word solid next to it, and that communicates it appropriately. After that, we test a point. Testing 0, 0 works most of the time, unless it's on the line. So, And we go back to the original, because oftentimes that's the easiest in the original. Is that true? Um, zero less than or equal to negative 24, true or false? True. I didn't. You get zero over on the left. Is that less than negative 24, true or false? Negative 24, false. False. So zero, zero was here, so we shade the side that doesn't have zero, zero on it because zero, zero we do not want in the solution set of that inequality. Copy. All right, here we go. So solve it for y, divide by negative 3. What do we have to remember after we divide by negative 3? Does anybody? A little bit of flippage, guys, on that inequality side. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Got to pay attention to that because we divided by a negative. Remember? Dividing or multiplied by a negative. Okay, so then we go start at negative 4. We go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right 3 because the slope is 4 thirds. Ooh, that's straight line. Um, solid or dashed? Dashed. Do we know why it's a dashed? Because there's no equal points. Um, you can, I would, but I want you to give a good faith effort to erase the line. That's I just write dashed if to make sure you communicate it correctly. Dashed. Um, that. No, not really. So then we test a point. Test zero, zero. Remember, true, we say that shade the side with zero, zero. False, we shade the side without zero, zero. Right. We can go back to the original again. Zero greater than 12? No. False. Shade the opposite side. Guys, if you wanted just to understand, if I were to pick another point, like 6, um, let's do 6, let's do 6, negative 4. If we were to point, pick 6, negative 4 and test it, is that going to be a true or a false statement? Should that be a true or a false statement? Should 6, negative um, I just picked another point, 6, negative 4, just for fun. That's in the shaded region, according to this graph, so it should make a true statement if we substitute it back in 